Uh, hola. <laughs> uh, bearded Poindexter here, filling you in on what's hot and what's not in the complicated world of internet dating. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I, I'm simply here to break down the third video in the four-part series. Try not to get your mind blown. I won't be able to help you with that. Technique number three. This applies to personal emails outside of the original dating site. <laughs> At some point after establishing a connection through messaging, you'll probably want to take it private. <laughs> as long as there are no red flags at this point, I don't see anything wrong with giving your personal email address, as opposed to a fake address that you make up just for internet dating or shady website registrations. <laughs> uh, this third technique can be a very beneficial step in the determination of a genuine person. Some scammers are very good, and they, they've been doing this a long time. They put in a lot of effort into getting you tangled up, you know, so, so your vigilance is key. Stay on your guard and do not trust anything until verified. I personally like to periodically pop quiz the potential partner, purposely positing a particular pregunta they've positively answered previously, just to make sure their answer stays the same. Consistency is key here. Okay. Down to business. You've begun to exchange personal emails, and of course, you're saving all correspondences for future perusal. The actual technique I'm about to describe can seem pretty complicated at first, <laughs> and requires some third-party sites. However, this is actually one of the major ways I actually determined I was being scammed before, so I like to think it's vital to any scam-busting toolset. Uh, boop boop danger danger big forewarning here <laughs> some people will think this is a little overboard even creepy or <laughs> stalkerish <laughs> uh, it, it may be if you have no reason to suspect anything I, I personally didn't use this until things weren't adding up and it proved my suspicions so i was glad i did it in the long run uh, the the final determination of whether to use it or not is up to you and your personal level of comfort or paranoia <laughs> Uh, it, it involves IP tracing from email header information. If your head just exploded, you may want to come back to this. Uh, I'm actually technically savvy, and it still took me some research to figure it out, so <laughs> good luck. Anyway, uh, inside the header information is an email. <laughs> Excuse me. Inside the header information in an email, you'll probably have to change a setting or click an option to show these as they are normally hidden from you to save confusion. There's lots of code. Uh, there are sets of numbers called IP addresses listed, tracking the email's path through the internet from the sender to your inbox. Uh, there is one particular section showing the IP address of the sending device, which is what you're looking for. Some services do hide this, so it is possible it won't be there, but if it is there, you can tell the origination point within a small enough geographical region to determine if the email was actually sent from where the person says they are, or if it came from some random scammer's hideout in Mexico. <laughs> If you do a search for email trace, there are some sites that simplify this technique and you just have to copy paste the entire email header into their little box and they decode it for you. But if you're like me and you prefer to do it manually, you'll need to get the proper IP address and perform an IP trace. There are several good sites out there that pop up first in search results for those specific terms and, and I'll include some links in the description below. I have faith in you. Simple, right? Okay, I know it's not, but worst case scenario, you ditch the trace altogether and do a simple email lookup. This does not always yield any results, and even when it does, they may not be what you're looking for. But it's one extra tool in your arsenal of getting the truth about who's on the other side of your, I'm sure by this time, lovely <laughs> conversations. There are several popular sites that let you enter an email address, and it will tell you if, you, if it has any records for that email. Sometimes who it belongs to, etc. Again, some people will feel weird about this, but it's for your own protection. Any information you find in this fashion will be freely available public records. I never recommend paying for any service that provides 
additional info. Uh, I also don't recommend signing up for any site to get the info. Just do an anonymous search and get out of there. As a side note, you can also do searches on those sites for first name, last name combos. Once they told you their name, do a quick search just to see. It should return some kind of info. If it shows absolutely nothing, that is a huge red flag. If you're a stubborn nincompoop, not convinced after that discovery, search for their siblings' names. Remember, these are public records, so anyone with a driver's license or social security number will come up in some respect. If you doubt me, search your own name first, just to see what it looks like. Uh, I include some more links in the description below. And, and that's the second to last technique all wrapped up for you in a tight little bun. Stay tuned for the final edition in this series, which deals with phone numbers. And don't forget to s like and subscribe and comment and uh, share it and love it and, and peace.